Hey everyone! It's Wednesday, you know what that means. It's live. We are live at five. You're fired. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about why firing people is actually going to grow your business. Um, it's yucky. Nobody likes to fire people, right? But when I learned how to master the art of firing, um, that's when my business actually grew. So what I usually do is I wait a few minutes for people to jump on, like two minutes. Um, I see a couple of people on there. Oh, I see five. If, um, if you're tuning in for the first time, say hi. Let me know. We had a lot of new members come this week. Um, I know there was someone that, a couple of people that recommended this group. So thank you. Um, and we had a little bit about 20 new people join the group. So that's really exciting. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cheryl Hazer. I am a cleaning business coach. I am also an active maid service um, business owner um, and also a power washing and a commercial business owner as well. So I teach people how to grow and scale, how to hire, how to sell, how to attract people that are going to pay your high prices um, and how to get paid. Um, so we'll wait a couple minutes. Um, say hi if you're tuning in. I see I have seven people on. I can see seven people on. So I'm Cheryl. I'm from the Boston, Massachusetts area. If you can't already tell from the accent, some people say I have a disguised accent. I spent a little time in Tennessee. So um, that's probably why. So I see eight people and no one's talking to me. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes. Um, then I'm going to start. So you must be all new. That's why you don't want to talk to me and say hi. Um, but anyways, so for those of you that don't know me, like I did say, um, my name is Cheryl Hazer. I founded Sisters Who Scale, which is this group. I help cleaning business owners drop bad habits, learn how to execute, learn how to hire, learn how to fire and gain high paying clients and a million other skills that you will need to make changes and grow your cleaning business of your dreams. So I scaled my own company from zero. I started as a solo cleaner, a little old me by myself when my son was little to over 700,000 and now I teach others to do the same. And my company is still growing and actively adding new streams of income. So that's all that I teach. So I'm still very active in my cleaning business so I can a thousand percent relate to every single thing that is going on in your business, okay? I was in the field cleaning for about two years and I transitioned out to where I only run it. I head up the sales, I head up the marketing, um, I've delegated everything else and now I spend my time teaching other cleaning business owners how to do the same thing as me. So I teach people to do result producing activities that will do the same for your cleaning company. I love what I do. I love working with owners all over the country and in Canada. I get you where you want to go, whatever you desire. I believe you can have it all if you truly want it, if you commit and if you execute the result producing activities. Those are the two things that stop people from having success, commitment and execution. Um, and that's part of what I teach. So the easiest part of this job is cleaning as an owner. That's the easiest part. You, you, we all know how to clean, right? But do you know what it takes to run the operations? That's where everyone gets stuck because these are skill sets that need to be developed. So no one was born with all the skills necessary to scale your company. No one, not me, not anyone, okay? It takes a little bit of guts, it takes a little bit of faith, and it takes that pure desire to win, to never give up, and to not let any obstacle in your way. So that's the difference. The difference between successful and non-successful cleaning business owners is that the successful ones are willing to do the hard shit and the others weren't. I swear, I'm from Boston, okay. Let's face it, not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone's meant to be an owner, but through working with me, I help you find that answer, okay? I help you find if you have what it takes to scale your business. It's not for everyone, that's okay. Some people may be fine with cleaning a few houses, right? Themselves every week, making a thousand, making 1500 a week. They're okay with that. Totally fine. This is your life. This is your business. You do what you want to do, right? Others want to scale their business and grow it big and leave a legacy to their kids. And that requires a lot of skills, a lot of execution and focus on result producing activities. Cause there's a lot of busy work in this business, right? Like doing the schedule, 
that's not a result producing activity, right? That's something that can eventually be delegated, okay? So scaling a cleaning business to beyond um, 500,000 annually um, doesn't just happen wishing for it. It takes focus execution. That's where I come in. So I help you get over all of the fears that are holding you back because it's you that's holding you back. It's not me, it's not your staff, it's not your clients, it's not the area you live in, it's you. Because there's so much business out there, it's absolutely crazy. So let's just get that out in the open. I like to be brutally honest. I feel that's the only true way that you get results. We look at what's good in your business, we look at what's not so good in your business, and we, we see what we need to work on because everyone has to work on something. No one's business is perfect. Even the people making $2 million, they got more problems than you do. <laughs> Believe it or not, they got a million problems more so than you do. So my coaching is a no excuse, let's roll up our sleeves, get the work done type of approach. No fluff, just result producing activities to get you what you want. So. Let me tell you um, an amazing story about, did I tell you this last time? I feel like I'm losing it. I th did I tell you the story about Sam and her, her fear on um, not wanting to do the quote? I think I did last week, so I'm not gonna tell you that story. Forget about that story. Let's get into today's training. So let's talk about firing people. Let me just check to see who's on here. Hey, Victoria, hey, Gabrielle, I was thinking about you today, I was gonna message you. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Jeannie. Nice to see you, too. Aramis. What's up, girl? I miss you. Oh, my God. I miss you. Um, all right. Let's talk about today's training. So let's talk about firing people. How many of you are uncomfortable with firing people? Me. Right? It sucks to fire people. So who hates to do this? Pretty much everyone. Ask yourself, why do you hate to do it? Why does everyone hate letting people go? Is it because you don't want to hurt their feelings? Is it because you need to cover the schedule? Like you need bodies? Um, do you not like being the bad guy? Not, not so many of us like being the bad guy. So if someone, you get to think of it this way. If someone isn't the right fit for your company, you're doing them a favor as well as yourself. If someone isn't a good cleaner, why are you keeping them around? Why are you keeping a body around? They, they're horrible to clean, right? It's like being in a relationship that you know is bad, but you keep them around anyway. So I hire fast, but I fire faster. That's sort of like my motto. So when you know you need to fire someone, you need to do it immediately. You cannot wait on this. Why can't you wait? Let's look at why. So who needs to be fired? Let's talk about who needs to be fired. Okay. Number one, a toxic employee, they need to be fired. Goodbye. One who's causing drama, because drama is going to leak into your good employees and could completely wipe out your team, and that's going to cost you revenue. So a toxic employee wants to talk about other people. They want to talk about their drama and their lives, their choice of boyfriends, girlfriends. They want to talk bad about the boss. You can't have people talking bad about the boss. Um, because this is the number one reason why employees quit because they don't like their boss so first of all you have to be a good boss but then second of all you don't want people starting rumors about you about the boss right so that's why they quit they don't like their boss they don't like their co-workers so drama is isn't the number one cause of, of people like leaving your company so a toxic employee is negative they drag everyone down like nobody wants to be around them and you can feel that energy when you walk into the room or the office in the morning. It's a total drag. This is a physical job, right? So your staff needs to be mentally psyched up every morning. So why would you keep a toxic employee in your organization? Because toxic employees are vibe killers. They have to go and they have to go quick. And it's hard to know when you hire someone if someone's going to be toxic, you know, because they hide it, right? So this is something that may develop over time. They turn into a disgruntled employee. One thing you can watch for is when you're interviewing, if someone talks bad about their boss at the interview, don't hire them. <laughs> if, if they just say, oh, it's their fault and this and that, you know, use your, use your instinct here, right? So maybe they don't address this concern, like you can't really tell this right away. Um, you know when you bring them in and then they feel that you don't have their back so like they turn more sour on you like there's all kinds of like crazy stuff like it can develop like over time so 
you don't want to do that. So toxic employees, those are the first people that need to go. Who are the second people that need to go? Someone who is a terrible cleaner. <laughs> I rate my people A's, B's, and C's. So if someone is a C, I'm usually looking to replace them. All right, we don't want any average C cleaners. You want the B pluses and the A's, okay? So if someone is a terrible cleaner, their lack of attention to detail is horrible. Their lack of not caring is even worse. So you can have one person that makes mistakes, but if they truly care about fixing their mistakes and learning and improving, that's totally different. These people don't care. Okay, they're a terrible cleaner and they don't care. They leave streaks in the bathroom mirrors, they miss the bottom of the shelf, the table for dusting, they leave visible crumbs like on the kitchen floor after they vacuum, like they're just doing like a real crappy job. So not everyone that applies for this type of job realizes how labor intensive and how detailed this job is. We all do because we all started the cleaning business ourselves, and we as owners tend to be OCD because no one would start a cleaning business unless they like to clean. For the most part, right? For the most part, you know, a lot of women start cleaning businesses, probably 80% of women, probably even 85%, because uh, we all like to clean, right? We all like to clean. So we love our attention to detail. We love shining the chrome. Who loves coming down in the morning and seeing a clean kitchen with no dishes in the sink and the chrome shine and the like the microwave streak free? I'm describing my life, um, you know, and everything in place and no crumbs on the table, right? We, I, I love that. I hate coming down when there's dishes, right? <laughs> so we love cleaning. We're all on the same level. So this is a skill um, that you can teach, but I usually have found that people either have it or, or they don't, right? So you can train them, right? But now, what if you don't have a right, the right training system in place, right? What if you don't have a trainer to train them in the field? So with my clients, I always look at what we, what we can do better as a leader. As a leader, what can you do better? Then we look outward. So if we look inward first, okay, then we look outward. You'd be surprised how often there could be a flaw in your systems or maybe no systems at all. Sometimes that happens if you're still in the winging it stage, right? So you'd be surprised that there could be flaws, right? And so they get frustrated because there's really no training system in place, right? And so this can be a problem. So for quality issues, you always look at your system first. See, what does your system look like? Are you giving them proper training? Are you giving them proper onboarding? Are you setting them up to have success at your company? This is bigger than you guys think, okay? So you wanna make sure you're not killing your chances of success by not giving them the tools they need, okay? They all, they, they you know, people go and they, they apply for a job and they have hope and they're excited to start and meeting new people, learning a new skill set. so you have to give them you have to teach them how to grow with you. You can't just be like, okay, go clean a bathroom. You know, that's not really gonna work. They're not gonna have faith in you if you don't have some type of a system in place this organized that everyone follows, okay? So that is the second one. The third one is another person you're gonna fire is someone who calls in a lot or has same day call-ins. I have one right now, she's on my shit list. She's gonna be going soon and she doesn't know it. <laughs> so when you hire at the interview, try and tell them that you frown on same day call-ins, okay? We all know why you frowned on same day call-ins because when you have the schedule all set and you got, you know, Kim going at nine, you got Betsy at, you know, 10.30 or whatever, and then you have all these people lined up and then one person calls in and it screws up everything, you have to change everything. You gotta, uh, you know, notify the clients you get to change the schedule, you get to tell the teams, it's like a big mess. So you have to communicate this. You have to explain to them that the schedule is done ahead of time, okay? And you have your assigned clients' homes to clean and they're depending on you and it becomes very difficult to schedule clients and reschedule clients last minute because you know everyone has gone around and cleaned for the cleaner. They've gone and they've, they've picked up all the clutter and the kids' toys and everything else, right? They're ready for us. Emergencies is one thing, but think about this. How many emergencies really happen in someone's life? Is there an emergency every week? No, that's a bunch of bull. We all know that that's a bunch of bull. So staff will lie to you. 
They'll say it's an emergency when it's really not. So there needs to be a ramification for staff if they're constantly calling in. Same day call outs, okay? So I just have one that I have we have to get rid of, right? So what we did is we um we said that we no longer allow same day calls. And if they have an emergency, they have to bring a doctor's note. So we've suspended people for having same day call outs. They're out the rest of the week, right? You have to have ramifications. We've pretty much eradicated the same day call outs. This one person, like I said, one person on my list and she's about to get the big old boot, right? She's gonna be leaving. So your staff need to have rules and ramifications. They can't just do what they want. They can't make the rules. They can't walk all over you. There has to be definite systems in place. Because it's one thing when you only have 10 clients or so, but when you have 50, 60 clients, 100 clients, and you're on the hook for getting all those homes cleaned, and the clients are only gonna be patient for so long, and you have business bills to pay, and that money's not coming in, it's a different ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Different ball game. So your people need to be reliable. Otherwise, your clients are going to find other cleaning services, and then they're going to tell their friends, oh, well, Made by it wasn't reliable. Right? That's the last thing you want. That spreads like wildfire, okay? So your systems need to be tight. So those are a few examples of who needs to be fired. Now let's talk about a few other things um, that need to be done correctly in the firing process. Okay, you want to write these down? You most certainly can. You want to document performance issues, okay? Before terminating an employee, now every state is different. Massachusetts is, I can go and I can, it's an at-will state, I can go and fire everyone. I still cover my butt, right? I still document performance issues. So before terminating an employee, ensure that you have documented the behavior issues, the performance issues, how many times they've called out, like you should have this in your system. It shouldn't just be in your head. It has to be written, it has to be time stamped, you know, all those things have to be in place. So you need to maintain a record of dates, a record of times, a record of the details with the incidents, as well as any actions taken to address the issues. Like if you do a written warning, um, you can do a verbal one too. Massachusetts, you can do a verbal warning. Um, they need to know. So the employee must know that there was an issue prior to getting fired. You can't just fire someone out of the blue because then they can go collect unemployment. So this needs to be like, you did this, you did this, you did this. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. You can get in trouble for that. They can collect unemployment, right? There's all kinds of stuff that going on that they can be like, oh, I was treated unfairly. Oh, I was you know discriminated against. All kinds of crap that they could come up with. So. You don't want them collecting unemployment insurance off you either, right? So we try to avoid this at all costs, right? That's like the big F you to us as a company when someone tries to collect unemployment off of us. Nobody likes it, right? They feel like they're getting back at us for wrongful termination. So it's imminent that you communicate with them when you know issues arise. You do this the proper way and you follow procedure, follow what your state guidelines say. So if they do claim unemployment and you go to the hearing, you can say, we documented this, we documented this, we documented this. And chances are you'll probably beat that, okay? So like for example, if they're getting quality complaints, write it down. Date it, say, all right, Casey Aries complained that there was still dust in the window sills. Sometimes if I say names, it's my names of like actual clients. <laughs> um, every state's gonna be different. So you have to comply with the state guidelines, okay? So um, I always write everything down when people have complaints. Uh, my team leads want to know, my team leads are awesome. They want to know who's getting complaints. They, they, like, they want to know that, right? So all this stuff needs to be in place. Is this all making sense? Let me check in with everyone. Documentation is vital. Yes, Jeannie. Yep, we got one. Yeah, Katrina, we always have one. Here I'm going to tell you, you always are looking to replace one in the group. Less than if it's three months, you don't need a reason. Okay, so, yeah, so 90 days. I think, I feel like that's, um, what part of Canada are you in, Katrina? Um, I have someone that's coming on board, and he's from Alberta. Oh, that's out west, I believe. Um, anyway, or Calgary, Alberta. No, is that different? Alberta. Thing. Anyways, um... What was I saying? No, I asked for a train of thought. So, okay. 
you need to document everything. If you are sure that you're gonna let them go, plan the termination meeting. I know this stinks, sometimes it doesn't always happen, right? Choose a private location, a neutral location. This is why you're all getting an office, ladies and gentlemen, is the best thing for you. You have your office, it's good. You don't wanna do this at a Dunkin' Donuts, okay? You don't, or a Starbucks or anything like that, okay? So, and I teach everyone to get an office. Most of my clients that we end up working together end up getting an office, um, usually within the same time frame. So, and that's office for a reason. Um, but so, the meeting, decide who's gonna be present. Typically, it includes the boss, it includes the employee, and an immediate supervisor or a manager or a witness, a team lead, something like that. So in my case, we will both be there in the room um, just in case anything happens. He said, she said stuff or whatever. Usually they know. People know when they're getting let go, okay? They know. So you, this is what you say. You say kindly to them because you always want to be kind because they're a human being, okay? You say, I don't really think this position is a good foot fit for you and then explain why whatever the reason could be they could not be a good cleaner um they could be doing the same day call-ins they could call in all the time they may have child care issues and this stinks like we're all you know we're women here like we have you, you know when you're when your child is sick like you that the child comes first right you know what that's like however if someone has sick kids all the time and they have multiple kids and they don't have coverage for it it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, your job is to cover your schedule, not to worry about what their kids are doing. So if they don't have reliable coverage when their kids are sick, they can't work for you. That's just kind of the reality, right? So it could be anything when you say, I don't think this position is a good fit for you. Um, if it's drama, chaos, you don't want to say, hey, you're a toxic B, you know what I mean? You don't want to say that. But like communicating stuff like this is so key and so many bosses get blamed for being assholes because but if you just communicated effectively and you weren't a scaredy cat you wouldn't get called an asshole sorry for swearing but it's true this would go a lot easier for you if you communicate from the get-go this is going to go a lot easier it's going to be less dramatic there's not going to be people storming out of offices slamming doors and the whole nine yards right so if you don't want to do that, you can also prepare a termination letter if you want to. Nothing will empower you more than letting someone go face to face because at that moment in time, you're going to realize that you're the boss. And when you finally realize that you're the boss, there's great empowerment that comes with that in a positive way. You feel confident. You're like, okay, I just let my first person go. I remember when I let the first, my first person go, I was scared to death to do it. But then after I was like, hmm, okay, all right, I'm just let my first person go. I am a boss babe, you know what I mean? Like I was like, <laughs> I'm like that's it. Um, so next thing, what you can do, prepare a termination letter. Make it clear, make it concise, Draft the letter, it outlines the reasons for termination, one, two, and three, whatever it is, the effective date, um, and the final pay and the benefits, the next step. When you fire someone, very important, this is probably standard with all the states, you have to give them both your paycheck. So you're always holding a week. Um, when you fire them, you have to give them, let's say you fire them, usually fire, get fired on a Friday, right? So you would give them the paycheck from the week before, and then you're gonna move, you're gonna give them this paycheck too. So you kind of gotta front that. You're gonna give them both paychecks. Here you go, sayonara. You're out the door. You can't say we'll mail you a check. You have to give them both the checks at the same time. So a little tip for you. So keep the tone professional in the letter, right? Avoid assigning blame or personal judgments. You can, you know, you can get to the details to a certain degree, but it's. You know, I think it's a bit more effective in person, but if you can't do that, you can always, you know, email it. If they won't show up or whatever, just email it, and that's, that's kind of how you do that. So making sure, as a boss, you did everything correctly, verbatim, by the book, follow the right process will make firing someone so much easier for you. So much easier for you. You can write it on a scratch paper. Yeah, you can do that. What, like you're 
your complaints, right? Yep, Alberta. Oh, are you in this? I think I'm in the same area. Is Calgary near in Alberta, or is that like a separate section? Forgive my ignorance. I don't know. All I know is I have a friend over in Vancouver that's like way on the the west coast, and then um, he used to live in Montreal. That's near me. <laughs> um, so. How did learning on a fire help me scale my company to over 700,000 a year? All right, this is very important. I got rid of the wrong people and it made me search for the right people. Not everyone can do this job, right? You know this is a labor intensive job. You absolutely love to clean or else there are plenty of other jobs. You can go to work at Dunkin' Donuts, you can make the same amount of pay, right? Off you go doing that stuff. And in the big scheme of things, a bad employee can do more harm than good to your company. They can cause a ton of problems for you. So it's crucial that you don't hold on to them long. So what do bad employees do to your company? The biggest thing they do is prevent you from growing your revenue. How do they prevent you from growing your revenue? You can get the cancellations of clients because same day call out. So if they call out too many times, your clients are eventually gonna cancel. They're gonna say, oh, Maidbright isn't reliable. We're gonna cancel and go find someone else, which is a direct loss of income. Okay, that's gonna affect your bottom line, okay? Here's the second one. If they're not that great of a cleaner, you're gonna have quality issues resulting in clients canceling service losing revenue the biggest thing they're going to do they're actually going to cost you money so bad employees are going to cost you money they're going to cost loss of revenue loss of revenue loss of revenue okay so if you lose five hundred dollars in a day two days a week over a period of four weeks it's four thousand dollars that's going to affect your bottom line that's a big number Right? Five, five, five. Yeah, that's a big number. And all because of employees. So keeping someone who calls in half the time is not conducive and profitable for your business. So the quicker you can fire them, the better. And then you recover from the losses and you move on. Getting the right employees in your company is how you scale. You're never going to scale with the toxic ones. Have them go work at McDonald's. They're not for you, okay? So if you are struggling with employees, we should have a chat. Most of my clients started in the beginning with me because they all had staff issues and they worked through them or they didn't know how to hire people and I taught them how to write great ads that attract people, okay? So whether it be learning how to fire them, how to hire them, how to discipline them. We work through these issues. I got them on track to being profitable and I get people out of the field, right? I, the people that get out of the field are the people that show up to class, do the work and do whatever it takes to make it happen. And it's happening like all over the place. And I'm so thrilled that like, I take 90% of my clients to get out of the field. Like it's pretty crazy, right? So. <laughs> if you're struggling, we should have a chat. Okay, I have an announcement, however. In October, my group program is changing. I have a group program and I have private sessions. My group program is changing. How is it changing? So, so far I've had what we call an evergreen open enrollment, so anyone can join, okay, for the group program. The group program is six months, and then after you graduate, there's other stuff that you know we stay on, um, in a mastermind as mentors and stuff, but the original group program is a six month program, okay? So I'm changing that for the better um, to make the experience even better for everyone that joins the program. So what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna be doing quarterly intakes or cohorts, okay? So why am I doing this? Because I've noticed that the camaraderie between the first ladies in the group that have gone through is amazing. And I want to continue that. I want to have it so every class forms a really close bond with each other. So in the future, when there are in-person retreats, what did I just say? In-person retreats next year, you can come with your class and actually meet each other. So super cool stuff brewing in the background. So how it's going to look is there'll be an open enrollment for about two weeks or so. I will announce it. I'll give you plenty of time, okay? 
Then once those two weeks are up, the doors will close and the next enrollment will not open up for three months later. So there's gonna be four a year. Instead of an evergreen, it's gonna be four a year. There'll be an open enrollment for a couple of weeks. Once that shuts, the doors close and then you can't join for another, you can't be part of it for another three months. So I'm doing that to make the experience that much better. So if anyone is, I've talked to you before, we've done strategy calls, you're on the fence, you, you, you think you want to, but you're you know, unsure or whatever. If you wanna get in now before that changes, you have to let me know, because it's gonna change within a few weeks. So type the word profits if you're interested in having a chat, seeing what it's all about, and you wanna get in before everything changes over to that quarterly um, enrollment. Let me know. Does anyone have any questions about this training? Calgary is a city of Alberta. I love that we were supposed to meet in person in a, a, the American Housing Association never happened. Um, I'm gonna do it next year. I'm totally psyched, Jeannie, so I've been talking it over with my husband. Um, we're probably gonna do it like in the spring, like late spring. Um, my husband runs a business with me. Late spring, and then I live in Boston. We're gonna do it um, at the beach. Yay, I love the beach. So we're gonna do it at the beach. Uh, we're going to be renting out, um, I know, cool, right? We're going to be renting out, like, a house or two, and then, you know, if there, there'll be, like, so many spots inside the house, and then everyone else that, you know, doesn't get in the house, there's going to, there's, like, a hotel, like, there's, like, a million hotels, like, right down the road, so you can stay down there, and then we're probably going to do, like, a three-day seminar um, where I'm going to teach on issues that are beyond actual in-the-group stuff, this, like, mastermind stuff, um, that I'm kind of working on. Uh, my husband is going to come in and he is going to teach um, his tech. He's going to teach about mastering profits and knowing your numbers and stuff like that. It's going to be really amazing. Like we've been kind of talking about it and it's going to launch it next season. So that's another reason why I'm doing the quarterly cohort so people can be in classes with each other, get to know each other, and then you can kind of come, you know, to our live retreats and stuff like that. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, so if anything, you know, if anyone has any questions, let me know. DM me, message me. It's really something that the industry needs. I think we all need to come together and, and like and, and be with each other because you know it's lonely out there being a cleaning business owner, like not having the support and a sounding board and stuff like that. Um, and there's, there's issues beyond you know, beyond learning how to hire and fire and scale and write your ads and grow your team. There's all kinds of entrepreneur issues and growing as a human being and an entrepreneur while you're running this massive organization. There's all kinds of stuff. I have like a list of like a million things I could teach. Um, but in the small scheme of things, that's the announcement. If anyone would like to get more information about how they can join the group program before I switch it to um, a quarterly enrollment, let me know. Um, I hope this was helpful. Happy firing. <laughs> Let me know if you have um, any issues or any questions. I'm happy to answer them, okay? I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk with you all soon. All right, bye-bye.